When you're young, every sensation cuts deep. As years pass, those sharp edges fade. On my first trip here in my early 20s, Tokyo hit me with its full force. The lights, the food, and the unexpected silence. Odd to associate silence with our world's largest city, but that silence is what's lured me back time and again. Initially, the movie Loss in Translation drew me here. Now, on my 20th journey, it's for something much richer. I'm here to learn from Greg Gerard, a photographer whose work I've long admired. Greg will be assigning me a photography project in the morning. From then, we'll sift, refine, and craft until the project is ready for print. Who is Greg, you might wonder? For 30 years and more, he's watched Asia's great cities transform. His books speak without words. JAL 76 to 88 is a favorite of mine. It starts with Greg landing in Tokyo, spring 76, thinking a few days would do. By the next morning, he knew he couldn't leave. His captured images are artifacts of a Japan now lost, a place I wish I could have experienced. Join me across these eight days. We'll strive for meaning in our work, in lands where we stand out, where we don't quite fit. And I wasn't actually playing any of that. This is the scratch audio you're hearing right now. Pretty bad. Let's start the assignment. So the assignment is last seen in Tokyo. Additional parts of the assignment, you're supposed to ask a stranger for a photo and also ask to photograph a private interior space. This sounds great, except for I find it very challenging to ask strangers for photos. I think this comes down to my general introverted nature, but also something more. The more I think about why I feel uncomfortable asking strangers for photos, I think it comes down to the fact that I'm not a person working on a long-term project that creates value of some sort in exchange for that person's time. Or maybe this is just an excuse because I find it very awkward and I want to avoid it. Or it's rooted in imposter syndrome. Anyways, Greg reframed a bit of this for me and he said the value you give to someone is taking an interest in them and photographing them with a professional camera, which does not happen that often anymore. Uh, Jason Vong and Vivian, why do you enjoy Tokyo? It's beautiful. I like the food. You heard it here first. Now back to the video. In Tokyo, the silence swallows you. Sure. Shinjuku and Shibuya roar with life, but step beyond the neon glow of the entertainment districts, and the world falls quiet. This quiet is what pulled me back to Tokyo a second time. It's an enveloping peace. Being here feels akin to a meditation in motion. The language barrier fortifies this tranquility. Advertisements may catch your eye, but they won't ensnare your attention. The shift in time shields you from the relentless tide of email and notifications. By the third day, you're walking 25 kilometers and it feels as natural as breathing. You walk, 
you explore, utterly present. Even the mundane glimmers with novelty, a house, a truck, a 7-Eleven, each bears a Japanese signature. Everything is new again. Cloudy days are for black and white photography. Kodak Tri-X. This was actually given to me by Tim from Kodak. So shout out Tim for providing me with the role that we're about to see in this video. And no, it doesn't make it a sponsored video by Kodak, but it is something of value they gave to me, which I think FTC guidelines forces me to tell you about. So now I've done that. Let's go take the pictures. Well, maybe let's put the film in the camera first and then, then we'll go take the pictures. This morning, I'm on my way to the hotel that they use in the film, Lost in Translation. They filmed a surprising amount of the movie in the hotel, which I kind of appreciate. I like getting a hotel that's on a high floor with a good view so I can do some landscape photography and also just relax and eat my egg sandwiches from the convenience stores here. So I get it, I get, I get it, Sophia. I understand why you did it. I'm happy that Bill Murray showed up. Here it is, Park High Tokyo. The pool is on the roof, but inside, not outside. They have a nice little welcome sakura as well. Very, very, very kind of them. How's the low light performance of this Osmo Action 3 pocket? Also pro tip, if it is a clear day and you wanna see Mount Fuji from the city, come on up to the Park Hyatt at sunrise. Um, nothing's really open in the lobby level. And as long as you're respectful and you don't come with a crew of 18 people, I feel like they're fine with you taking a few photos from up here. Really cool hotel. And if you find it on a day that it's reasonable to stay here, I highly recommend it. And get the Shinjuku facing view. This is what it looks like from your room. And you too can be a lazy cityscape photographer, just like me. Let's take some pictures, shall we? I guess we don't even need to get a room here to get this shot if it's, uh, if you come up here early enough in the morning. I'm going to switch to my 35 millimeter lens right now, get a few wider shots. I feel like that's something that I always uh, do incorrectly. It's when I'm in a big environment like this, I try to go super wide and include everything. And uh, coming up here with a 50 and starting with a 50 is actually uh, pretty nice, pretty nice change. All right, roll the tracks, done. And now let's hop to class with Greg. Portrait 400 in the park with cherry blossoms. There they are, they're not in focus yet. There it goes. Travel when mixed with purpose has never been simple for me. And now AI complicates this further. With mere words, one can conjure a place real or not in a photo so lifelike it stuns. The magic has diluted the allure of photography. Capture something beautiful and it's dismissed as a work of AI. This skepticism fuels the comeback of film photography. There's a growing crave for the flawed, the tangible. Perhaps therein lies the essence of a meaningful creation, to craft something authentic. Hemingway said, all you have to do is write one true sentence, write the truest sentence that you know. And photography, I believe, shares this principle. To capture a moment that resonates with truth is to craft a meaningful photograph. Achieve this with skillful composition and light, and you forge something truly exceptional. Sorry to interrupt your cinematic experience. All the photos you're seeing are 1.5 stops overexposed in camera. Rated the film for about 160 ISO. But yes, now I am at Itchy Ram. And also just so you know, there is an ad incoming and it's two minutes in length. Now back to the video. Here we are in the Shinjuku Gardens and uh, the cherry blossoms are doing the cherry blossom thing, which is nice. 
have like MP and 50 millimeter F2 Sumicron made in Canada. There's a lot of people here, but it's very calm, very quiet, very Japan. I want to say thank you to today's sponsor, Milanote. Do you have a bunch of apps on your phone and lists on your desk to try to stay organized? I have a note for everything, places to visit on this trip, notes about film stocks, how I expose shots so that when I get the film back I can see if it worked or not, plus a lot of shared documents that I'm working on with others. The problem with this is that the text is easy, but as soon as you start getting visual, you run into problems, and as a visual person, that's kind of sad. This is where Milanote comes in, an easy to use tool to organize your ideas and projects into visual boards. This guy right here says it's the Evernote for creatives, and I think he's right. The idea is that you can write notes, to-do lists, upload images and files, save text, images and links. Plus, not only is it great on computer, the app also works seamlessly and updates your projects on the go. Everything is organized visually and you can even collaborate with others. You're able to visualize everything in one place by making dynamic mood boards from past shoots or use any of their 500,000 plus built-in images. There's an easy template process to get you started and everything is drag and drop. You can even save to your board from the Chrome app as well. When it comes to this photography trip, this board here is a place that I can see everything visually. I save some visual inspiration, the cameras, the film stocks I was planning to bring, plus checklists that I could either check off on my computer or from my phone through the app. Whether you're on set or experiencing jet lag, you don't always remember everything. And the more you can fix things in pre-production, the better. Please don't fix it in post. And overall, the better that you can plan going into a trip like this, the nicer of an experience you're going to have. Put in the organizational energy before the trip so you don't have to make too many decisions while you're there. This also allows you to mentally relax a little bit, which allows you to get more in the space of creating work you want to exist in the world. There is a link below to get started with Milanote if you're interested and start creating something visual and nice to look at rather than just something in text or scribbled on your desk at home that doesn't translate to this app that you can just bring with you anywhere in the world. Thanks Milanote for sponsoring and there's a link down below if you are interested. Excuse me, strange man on the street. What do you look for in a tarp? Some tarp and some beers. Come to Tarp Land, Tarp District, Tokyo. Which one do you think you'll decide on? I think this is the best here. Blue? A leisure sheet blue. So it's a hot dog and churro cart? Wonderful. What's the secret to setting up the tarp here in the park? Open. Rip it open and hope it's big enough. <laughs> the secret is to get here very early. Oh, that's a lot. It's uh, full bloom today. Big photos. suggested when I was asking him about this. Ooh, he gave me a, uh, instead of an exact location, he gave me a list of directions to follow. He said, go from Shinjuku, uh, walk on the east side of the tracks, get to kind of into Kabuch Kabukicho. Nice, man. Nice, nice. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. <laughs> what is your general approach to street photography and what we're going to be doing tonight? Um, yeah, that's a, that's a deep question, the general approach. Well, it, it might sound a little cheesy, but I like to think these days that I have a mindful approach, meaning I'm pretty accepting of anything that we encounter. I don't try to have like a preconceived notion about what I'm going to see or shoot. You know, some, some photographers I feel like Oh, I only do this, or I only do that, you know what I mean? Like particular things. 
I just go out, I don't know what's gonna be there, and whatever I see, if I like it, I'm gonna shoot it. And uh, where are we? Oh, this is uh, Shinjuku, but specifically Kabukicho. Do you like it here? I love it here. It's my favorite district. Do you really love I'm it here? I'm not sarcastic, it's my favorite area. So I guess, yeah, what, what's a good thing or what interests me, right? Um, I think a big inspiration for me, photographically or visually, is um, <laughs> cinema. That's a big can of worms out there. Well, what even looks cinematic? To me, the things that look cinematic have a mood, a strong mood. Because when you watch a movie, at least good movies, right, they have good moods. Or like, when I say good, I mean like well-defined moods. So you kind of know what to feel. So that's what I mean by mood. And so I like scenes that evoke some kind of a mood, somehow, right? Um, and that's what attracts me first and foremost, I would say. But then, of course, there are some secondary technical considerations, right? You can have a nice mood, but like, you know, if the, you, you just have to think about how you're gonna frame it. Like if there's no good framing, you might feel the mood, but then I, I'll give up. I might take a, still take a photo, but I'll give up quickly. Like, oh, this is not working. Sometimes, sometimes it is. Sometimes I see the moment, I'm like, oh, I gotta get that. But often it's, again, it's more often than not, it's like what I was just saying, there's a mood. There's a nice light, a nice texture, a nice scene, and I think, okay, how can I, find some moment in this scene. evening time. This is a dramatic in-camera double exposure in my hotel room. We're going to load up the Leica MP. And the only film I have left right now is Portrait 400. And I really wish I had some extra chrome left. So I might have to go over to Yodabashi over here tomorrow and pay like $50 US for a roll of Ektachrome because I think it is going to be worth it. But right now we're going to load the Portrait 400 in the Leica MP. Take some pictures out here. We're also gonna turn off the, the lights in the room so there's less reflections. And we are going to begin with the 35 Sumalux at maybe 1.4, maybe we're gonna stop down to two. Maybe we'll get a tripod. Wow, look at how professional we are today. And I will be using the light meter on my phone um, to figure out what the exposure is going to be, or I guess I could mirror this off digital camera too. And surprisingly, the uh, the meter is exactly zeroed out. So if it gives you that circle, that means it is a correct exposure according to the camera and also verified on my iPhone app. But then if it's underexposed, it'll give you that arrow. All right, I'm swapping the 35 Sumalux to the 50 Sumicron 
also made in Canada. We used to have an absolutely wild amount of film at this Yodabashi location. And uh, it's a little sad now. Oh, we're not even open. That's funny. I'm going to hop into the daily Yamazaki and get some sort of pastry. I decided to go for the waffle to continue the Combini waffle comparison tour. Well, let's go find some film. All right, now we get to see what price the extra chrome is. So wild news, the cost of extra chrome 6,500 yen, which is like $45 US. The question that none of you asked, film versus digital. Most or all of Greg's work is film and color positive slide film to be a little bit more specific. So the colors he gets out of the world and man-made light sources is just a little bit different. Shadows tint naturally in unique ways and images come together in a way that's really challenging, time consuming, or even impossible to do to a digital file. Plus there's an element of randomness to film that I really enjoy. You think you know what you're getting, but there's always some surprises. Some are good, some are bad, but it makes the process, in my opinion, a little bit more interesting. I think there's also value in not immediately seeing the final product as well. For travel photography, it removes my ability to edit and post while on location, so you can use that time to experience a little bit more. This all said, film is getting prohibitively expensive, which is sad. Because of Greg's use of film, most of the photographers attending the workshop are primarily film photographers. The problem is logistics. Film labs are disappearing, and even in a place like Tokyo, it's hard to find same-day processing for scans. For basic C41 color neg film, it's possible, but color positive film is a different process, and you might be waiting days or weeks even at pro labs in Japan because of this we're all shooting digital for ongoing review from Greg if you like Andrea are double shooting most scenes first on digital then on film I decided to just use one camera at a time sometimes I will bring a digital camera and sometimes film I don't like carrying a lot of gear around all day like lenses and tripods even if it does limit my ability to get some shots just a small bag works the best for me here's a shot of me with a bag okay here we go nope I'm not going that way. Here's the bag I bring. Cool shot, right? Creepy Jason. For part two of the workshop, the crew is off to Okinawa. It's an island that is now part of Japan, and it is a heck of a lot further south than I thought. Overall, Okinawa is a lot like Hawaii. The weather, the ocean, the politics of being an island so disconnected from the mainland, and the fact that there are a lot of US military bases here. So it's Japan, but they have 26 A&Ws and 32 US military bases. It's also a tourism hotspot for a lot of Asian countries like Japan, China, and Taiwan. Here we are in Okinawa. 
Okie dokie 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 no. On today's walking tour, we will see uh, this place is called Bish. If we're lucky we'll get to see a monorail together. I had the Ricoh GR3X with me, which is an incredible camera. I didn't use it a whole lot for the workshop portion of this, but there will be an additional video coming out with my friend Rico. We thought it was funny Ricoh's with Rico, so subscribe, and that video will be coming soon from Tokyo. After a few days of this workshop with Greg and Photofilmic, I am going to say that the thing that I'm enjoying the most is that we come together every morning, we talk, we learn a little bit, and then we are sent out into the world to create and you're there with a bunch of other like-minded creators that are also there on their photography dream trip. Go for a walk, like M11P, 28, Elmeret. This camera does not have IBIS, so I'm down at one slash eight of a second. And I was being very conscious to make sure that I have three points of contact, my face and two hands, so that the images aren't blurry, unless intentionally I want them blurry. And basically what I'm looking for is interesting lighting. So lighting like this, vending machine, and see what it does. If it lights up a cool scene, and that somehow balances either with the lights on this building here, or maybe blue hour comes in a bit, and uh, the scene balances together. At that point, it becomes a photo. And until that point, it doesn't. Interesting building. And I like the fact that it's mixed colors of light, that there's some incandescent out there, kind of, LED, I guess that balances with that over there. That's a little more green, some green, white, orange. Looks cool. And as it got a little bit darker, I switched back to my digital M11P and went for a walk around my hotel and then into the arcade where a lot of the locals hang out. There's a lot of tiny little snack bars and maybe 10 or 12 seats. And all of them seem to do karaoke, which is very funny. So you can, at any time, you can just pick up the iPad and, and start doing karaoke. And I knew that digital photography was going to be great in Blue Hour, but I figured that if I did it right, color positive film, Ektachrome 100, might be a little bit better. So I dedicated the entire next day to Ektachrome. And uh, Greg shoots a lot of color positive film and uh, now one of the only ones available on the market is Ektachrome 100 from Kodak. And I keep saying color positive film, but it means the same thing as slide film, so that the image on the negative is actually the color version. So if you had a slide projector and you were showing your friends and family the cool trip you went on, the projection on the wall or on that screen is going to be in full color rather than the negative version, like if you're shooting a Portrait 400 or Gold 200 or any other color negative stock. And I like the look of color positive film a lot. There are some things to consider. Jet practice. It's a military island. And there are some things to consider when shooting color positive film. The one thing is that your exposure pretty much has to be bang on because you do not have the latitude that you'd have with color neg uh, or a digital raw file. So you're basically kind of just shooting a JPEG. So it makes it more fun and exciting when you actually get a shot correct and a little bit sad whenever your entire roll doesn't come out. The camera I'm using right now, I may switch to the Leica MP a little bit later, but right now I'm using this Nikon 35 Ti. I love this camera, it has the analog dials up top, which is really, really cool and unique, and I wish that they would bring that back in some sort of other format. 
and I think we may have just come across our first picture right here. I just want to highlight how ridiculous the colors and the tone and how everything came together so perfectly in this image and it's just the middle of the day. Shout out Panda Plush for developing and scanning. Here's 100% crop. Look at how good that looks. Damn, this Nikon 35Ti also. One of the reasons that I'm enjoying my time here in Okinawa is the fact that the crowds of Tokyo were kind of stressing me out. I guess the flash went off on that one. That was a surprise. It is ISO 100 film. So I guess that probably, I don't know, that doesn't really make sense. Maybe it thought that you were in the foreground there and wanted to take a picture of you and make sure you had fill flash. We're in P mode. P is for professional. What I'm kind of looking for is uh, naturally lit scenes. The sun is going to add that nice saturation. Uh, if I was shooting something like this scene over here, it looks pretty nice. Uh, it'll just be in the shade and the colors won't pop as well as they should. But if I photograph over here and get some nice greenery, hopefully those greens feel very, very nice. We are now entering the arcade. And then down at the end of this alleyway, we have a very photogenic vending machine. I'm going to get this photo from right here. And it's not in the sun, but it looks pretty good. And I'm happy with that. May have just gotten a good shot with three layers there, or it might be blurry because it's kind of moving. We'll find out together, or I guess you know. What do we think? Is that a photo? Okay, that sounds interesting. It's a pretty unique scene. Who's your friend? I don't know if that photographs, but also a bowling pin right here. And yes, we're going back to the Taco Rice house. Here we have Aaron pictures from a staircase. Here it is. Coolish. It's a dessert for children, but it's pretty good. to Chrome Christmas. We're gonna start at the vending machine right down there. Hey look, now we're outside. The camera I'm using right now, the Leica MP, Portrait 400 and the 35 millimeter F1.4, made in Canada, 35 millimeter, Sumilux. So the idea for this is I'm going to go and reshoot some of the locations that I shot at five in the morning. When I had that nice morning blue hour, I'm gonna see what those locations look like around sunset with Portra 400. I should also mention that I'm overexposing the Portra 400 by one stop, so I'm rating it at 200 ISO. I like the look of that a little bit more overexposed. It's always better to add more light to your film than less light. I don't know if this is a photo here. It's been a few minutes and I have absolutely no idea where my blue hour locations were. So I'm gonna take a left here and uh, see what happens. All right, so this is one of the blue hour locations. Unfortunately, it is now littered with automobiles because it is in fact a parking lot. So uh, getting here early, thumbs up.
There it is, Porsche 400. Hope you enjoyed it as much as I enjoyed it. Now on to the evening. The things are already getting crazy. And uh, I'm going to be shooting some Ektachrome 100 and probably this lens wide open at f1.4 because it gives a very interesting and very technically incorrect look, but I enjoyed it a lot. Ektachrome 100, kind of pre-scouted on digital, a lot of the locations that I want to shoot, and I'm hopeful that they're going to come out a heck of a lot better than my digital shots. Let's go take some pictures. I feel like this is a Ektachrome scene. This restaurant here, this is one shot that I couldn't really get, at least that I was happy enough with. Um, but the contrast between the colors of these lanterns and the sky that gets blue right over here, or bluer during blue hour, I'm hoping I can get one tonight. I feel like this is the angle, but vertical. Uh, about a half an hour too early though. Quite a scene we have down here. What is going on here? All right, it's officially blue hour, and uh, we photographed the strangest restaurant I've ever seen, where it's a parking garage and also a restaurant. I love it. So with Ektachrome, you want to expose kind of more for the highlights than the shadows like you usually would with Color Nag. And I'm pretty happy with how it's coming out so far. All right, a few more photos of uh, my failed location from yesterday. Oh, it's such a good color taxi cab for this time in the evening. There we go. As you can see, it lights up very nicely. Ektachrome complete. Now it is time for a round with Cinestill 800T. Things are gonna look a little bit different, more halation and just different colors overall. And I can be a little bit more sloppy with my exposures, which is nice because there's a lot of dynamic range when you're photographing bright lights versus dark spaces. Let's go for a walk. This was my last night in Okinawa. Tomorrow we'd make our selects and Greg would set our pages, one from Tokyo and one from Okinawa. That said, the final layout is still a mystery and I find some enjoyment in that uncertainty. Greg talked about his magazine days, shooting for press, loading film into cameras, then rushing rolls onto planes destined for London or New York for development. Then you'd grab the morning paper or this week's magazine just to see the fate of your shots, which ones made the cut. In this digital age, that seems pretty crazy to me, that you don't get to see your final work before somebody prints it in a magazine. Maybe there's an allure in collaboration with someone less acquainted with the scene. I look at my photographs and they're more than images to me, they're filled with feelings, the air, the moment. To someone else, someone without these layers of memory and sensation, the choice might be clearer and more suited to an observer far removed. This way of working is a stark contrast to how Greg now curates for a book or for an exhibition. Each method has its merits and its faults. Leaving Okinawa is emotional. It's like the last day of summer camp. We've spent our days crafting art in a new place, led by Greg and Photofilmic. On this island, both real and metaphorical, we lived a dream together. Greg's guidance as our magazine editor kept us on track teaching us to weave stories from seemingly disconnected images 
I am rarely up for sunrise, but this trip changed that. To those thinking about a workshop with a photographer they admire, go for it. Whether it's near or far, it will be a unique journey shared among friends you just haven't met yet. We're now here at Panda Plush Photo Lab and we are developing all the images that I took on this trip. So you've seen them, which is great for you. I haven't yet seen them. And I know that I ran this through the CT machine leaving Japan. So it's gonna be a mystery how this comes out. Even if time flies away. 